So, we are with Mr. Kofi Ansa, the leading Ghanaian designer, like continuing to make inroads in the global design scene. As the last time I thought I had a leading African designer, but then they couldn't say Ghanaian. Ah, oh, but if you are the leading Ghanaian designer, you have to be the leading African designer. No, no, it's right. Anyway. Uh, other, others may disagree. You, you, you just come from Brussels, a show for the African, Caribbean, and Pacific countries in the EU. But what was this show about? Uh, it was trying to show employment creation through the arts. So using fashion as a medium for creating employment. So it was a a base of fashion and music, you know, which uh, was exhibited, and we had a joint show at the Boza, uh, the theatre for the arts. And how did it go? How did it show go? I think it went well. Uh, but how, how do you judge the success of a fashion show? By the reaction of the audience. I mean, this was a theatrical audience, and I tried to position the whole thing in a very theatrical way. Uh, and I was watching the screen when the model started going on, and when the audience clapped from the first model to the finale, they you know that they liked what they were seeing. And they were so you you you, 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 you had the monitor backstage, yes, and you would have directed it differently if the reaction had been different. No, no, I think it was because I had uh, organized how the models were going to come on, and all that. Uh, I, I'm not being cocky, but I was sure of this collection, and I know the impact because of course we have a beautiful. We don't realize how beautiful our culture and the thing we got in our culture is. Mm -hmm. uh, but I had to package it and present it in a way, you know, for the world to appreciate and see it. The and way I see it. I think it worked that way. I think it worked. Yeah. So you were essentially exhibiting our traditional woven fabrics, came they? Yes, and trying to not just exhibiting, but there was a whole message behind it to let us and the world know that there's a serious commercial, you know, end to what we do and what we have if it's packaged well. So right now I'm trying to help develop uh, the capacity building, you know, the supply side because... You are, you are with working with weavers, traditional weavers? Yes, you know, trying to work as in and getting the experts in the industry to collaborate so that as a team we can all get on board, mm -hmm. you know, to get the young people to train them to weave. And then when we create the capacity, we can collaborate with the foreign companies who are very much interested in working with that. That sounds very complicated. How are you going to get the weavers in Abuzumi or Bonre to manufacture in commercial quantities? We have a lot of school weavers who are unemployed. Right now, unemployment is a fashion, you know, here. Uh, excuse the pun, fashion. But we can train them. I always believe in education as a key to industrialization. We take them after school, those who don't get the units and all that are uh, employment. We train them efficiently because we bring in the local weavers who are experienced. I met a man who is 85 years old and he's been weaving in for the past 70 years. Can you imagine someone like that? The wealth of experience, the guy will die and go away with it. That means he can give us some of his uh, expertise. And you will remember for that. And, uh, once we create the efficient workforce, we I can can then say this is a very practical application of all the talk about the creative economy. It is, it is. But mm. we have to set out the whole fundamentals and the infrastructure which will facilitate this process. Okay. Now, um, I remember you took active part in the ONTA 12 here in Ghana. Mm. And I suspect these shows, the one in Brussels, would just return from perhaps the one in Rome, are connected to that Untouch process? Funny, funny, the Untouch 12, that's where it all started because I just walked in as a, a careless observer and I got dragged into the whole thing. 
for the ITC thing because uh, I was actually sitting on one of the forum sessions and uh, I think I said something that somebody liked. So by the end of the session, Patricia Francis, um, who is the boss of the National Trade Center, which is a UN, the WTC, uh, body, uh, no, rather the WTO body, got me on board and uh, I got interested in the See, I, I, I was at that session. I didn't know you were not, <laughs> your intervention was not planned. Mm. It was at the session in the tent in the car park at the state house. Funny how things took turns because uh, I was invited to do a fashion show. Then okay. but they couldn't raise the money. You know mm. the uh, organization yes. that they gave the mm. contract to, they couldn't raise the money. So which meant my participation was not involved. But uh, I went to see what was going on anyway, mm. and uh, one thing led to the other. I see. Then so you got onto the panel. It was meant to be. Because I remember very clearly, in fact, in my notes, uh, yeah. somebody from Ethiopia yes. said they had stolen, well, an Ethiopian design has been stolen. Yes. And you made a very but that's the politically incorrect point of making that, well, you, you are happy that happened. My dear man, I can never be politically correct. I'm a fashion designer. You see, I look at it from a creative point of view. He was sitting down there carping about the fact that a British... A very influential well known British designer has used their fabrics and thinking that because he used their fabric, he was laying claim to the, I don't know, uh, intellectual, yeah, mm, yeah. intellectual property. Mm. And so I was saying that this was a guy who was very influential, he used a fabric, hijack the situation, jump on board and work with him, make him your ambassador for your mm. fabric. We don't think creatively, we always, Africa, we like complaining, always moaning, hey, why you done me wrong? You know, you come and you take my this in here, you make them, well, what are we doing about it? We ain't doing anything with it anyway. So if somebody has the ability and the facility to come and use it, they say, hey, but they like what you're doing with my thing here. It's a psychological approach. Let's work together. You know, so in the end, they could have been producing volumes of that fabric and shipping it to England, Europe. It's still a very uh, untraditional point, let me put it that way. It is not traditional, uh, but then I like I was following your show in Brussels because I knew about it. Mm. And all the newspaper reports that I, I pulled up were from Jamaica. Mm. In fact, although they were from Jamaica, and obviously they wanted to give the Jamaican angles the stories, you still featured quite prominently. But what, that struck, what struck me is it appears to me that the Jamaicans are taking this whole thing about the creative economy much more seriously than we do. I would be very surprised if the graphic for instance sent me Corley or something like that to cover your show. It will happen because we are doing politics. We love politics. You see, politics... Politics is good. I'm a progress oh, oh, scientist. Oh, politics it is, is good. good. We are all political. But then, after politics, you cannot eat politics. Politics is the, a the, means, the, 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 the a means the, to the, an the end. The politics should appreciate the creative economy. They should. They should. You know, uh, you cannot have, really, employment without creativity. Be it in the arts, in industry, in whatever. Even the mines. The machines which go down the mines to bring up the gold and the diamond has to be designed by an industrial designer before the engineers build it. So why do you always look at the creative part of our life as something useless? No. I think you are being unfair to us. I'm not being unfair. Which I'm of our creative industries have been developed commercially? Well, I maybe, pose a question generally. Maybe not commercially, but each time I look at the parliamentary proceedings with their robes designed by you, I always say, well, this is a clear sign of us becoming more conscious for, um, in design terms. Mm, it, it's good, but then that is uh, a couture creation. It is not mass. that's all well and good. If we can do that, but we need to take it on mass to the general public, to the world, so that the world can pay us money for what we have and what we do. We have to live well, you know, by our 
So Culture, what is the one big thing you would want the new government to do? I think the government has to take start taking the artisanal sector very seriously because we are a means to employment creation. We don't have massive engineering uh, industries to start making combined harvesters and you know, all that. What we have, an example I showed was when we did the CAN 2008. I used our cultural heritage to help create the opening and closing ceremony. And both said, Blatter, inside Hyatt, they said it's one of the best opening and closing ceremonies you've ever seen. That was a big branding for Ghana. Yeah, big branding.